we were finally going to get a chance to synthesize a real picture of the grays, not just case by case by case, but what's behind the cases? What's the common ground? Where are all these stories coming from? And why does the image of the grays look alike from story to story? I'll tell you why they look alike, because it's straight out of a movie. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, really? Well, then how can you explain this? Close Encounters of the Third Kind is a 1970s movie. Betty and Barney Hill described that gray 1961. I'm struggling to deal with just extraterrestrial crafts being on the planet Earth. And now I have to investigate the creatures that are actually flying them. Well, you're just going to have to take baby steps. Then. Yeah, it's a big step. We've had descriptions of grays for over 40 years. There was the Roswell incident, Outer Limits, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. There was the alien autopsy. But the real description, under hypnosis, came from Betty and Barney Hill, who in 1961 claim that they were abducted by gray alien beings. This description was the foundation for all the later depictions of the grays on television. Large head, four and a half feet tall, long, skinny, squiggly arms, thin legs, no nose, a slit for a mouth. Who are these grays? But more important, why are they here? We are in remote British Columbia, near the town of 100 Mile House. We're going to meet with Miriam Delicato to hear about her encounters with grays. It was October 1988. We were driving in northern British Columbia, and all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, these lights appeared behind the car. It was almost as wide as two lanes. We actually thought that they were a big truck or something. The lights started popping on and off. The girl driving started to get really afraid. Um, and then all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, I said to her, pull over the car. It's not you they want, it's me. What possessed you to say that? I really didn't know at that point. Miriam's story, it's very interesting, but I find a little far-fetched because she was in a car with three other people. None of them saw what she saw. None of them experienced what she experienced. They just don't remember it, period. I was just about ready to grab the steering wheel because she didn't want to pull over, and her head tilted to the side, and she just pulled over. Did she pull over voluntarily? Something must have been guiding her because all of a sudden she became very quiet. Once the car was in the stop position, Nobody in the car was moving at that point. Suspended animation is the way I describe it. In front, these short um, grays were walking towards me, and they were about three and a half feet tall, a little bit larger, bulbous type of heads with the uh, round black eyes. There was no features on them that, di that distinguished one from the other. And then I start hearing a voice in my head, and it was, OK, get out of the car. Do not be afraid. We will not harm you. My hand started reaching to the handle. I'm thinking, why am I doing this? I got out of the car. They walked towards me, and they took me by the hand. They were really cold, and it wasn't like warmth from, you know, a person or an animal. It was cold. But wouldn't a normal reaction be to run for your life or pull yourself away from little beings that are dragging you into a ship? <laughs> Absolutely, but there was no conversation other than, do not be afraid, we will not harm you, um, which did actually calm me down. This is very interesting what Miriam is saying about the greys calming her. Uh, maybe they have some way of doing this, uh, perhaps telepathy is involved. They just simply took me by the hand, led me down the highway. When I looked up, I saw a very large craft, probably about 40 or 50 feet across and right at the doorway were these two tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed aliens. Nothing like the greys? Absolutely nothing like them whatsoever. These short um, greys that had been with me just let go of my hand, and I walked on board the craft with the two tall blondes. What's the relationship of the greys that took you from the car to these tall blondes? I would say that these greys were their helpers. When you say grays, it's not just one species of extraterrestrial. There are many, many different species of them. What we heard from Miriam is that this species was obviously totally servile, almost robotic-like. We walked on board this craft, and they sat me down on this chair, and in front of me came a screen out of thin air. And then they started showing me all of these different images of um, catastrophes on the planet, earthquakes, uh, solar flares, war, 
and I was shown all of these different, what I believe is sort of like timelines and paths that humanity could take. And then I was explained how if we came together as, um, as a species that we would be able to avoid any and all of these events. It was explained to me that they are the caretakers of this earth and that their purpose in being here is to help enlighten us, make us aware of who we are, and to make sure that we do not destroy ourselves or the planet.